play one part in the ensemble every show, and I am the understudy for Glinda. An understudy goes on for a principal role if they can't do it for whatever reason, like they're sick or on vacation or injured. Um, and here at Wicked, it's a little different because Glinda and Elphaba, the two leading ladies, have a standby. Uh, so the standby also needs to be out for me to be Glinda. I was out of the show for nine months having this baby. This is Georgia, um, and she is six months old now. But I was out of the show for six months, and I tried to run the, uh, the show right before I came back in my apartment, just with a recording, sort of thinking about what I did next. And I couldn't remember anything, and I was terrified. And I came back, and I said, I'm not gonna remember anything, but then I physically, did the show in the rehearsal space um, and on the stage, and my body remembered what I was supposed to do really quickly. It was kind of amazing. I play a lot of little parts in the ensemble, like a citizen of Oz and a Shiz University student and a super fancy ballroom guest, a citizen of Munchkin Land, and things like that. It's not difficult knowing so many little parts. We call it a track, and that's just sort of my part. I sort of look at it as one part, uh, and Glinda as another part. The swing job is, I think, the hardest job on Broadway. They have to know, like, seven or eight different tracks and go on for them all the time like could be a two show day and they play one track in the first show and another track in the second show um, and the dancer swings often go on in the middle of a show they'll be in one track and they have to switch um, and I think that takes a special sort of person um, to be able to switch gears like that and remember all of that information but two parts I can do I am a swing and an understudy at Wicked. I guess I'm considered the, the singer swing. There are, I think, 12 men ensemble in the show, and I cover basically all of them except the, the real dancer dancers. There's up to eight guys that I go on for, and then plus um, I understudy The Wizard and Dr. Dillman. So there's, there's 10 tracks total that, um, that I've been on for, or could be on for at any notice. I've always been a bit of a perfectionist my whole life, and, and I think that that sort of lends itself well uh, to being a swing. Though it sometimes can be like 18 months between times I go on for a certain track, so that can be a little nerve-wracking, but, you know, that's part of the gig. <clears throat> me, 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 me. <clears throat> I've been with the show uh, in various forms, always as a swing. Since 2007, I started in the original L.A. company, and I first came to Broadway in 2008. Uh, and so my first six months with the show in, in L.A. in particular were very stressful. Uh, my heart would go into my throat pretty much whenever the phone would ring about an hour before a half hour, because that was usually, oh, you're on for something, and I just didn't have it in my head yet. But now that I've been with the show for a long time and been thrown into lots of situations, it's calmer now. So I have a much stronger sense now of, of knowing what needs to happen in order to uh, make the show work in whatever slot that I'm in. I love being a standby. It's kind of the best of both worlds. Um, sometimes I have the opportunity to watch the show, and then sometimes I have the opportunity to be in the show. My job is to come to the theater and be ready at the drop of a hat to go on for the role of Glinda. Sometimes I'll know if there's a vacation that the Glinda is taking and I'll, I'll know that I have the time, um, you know, a week of shows, and sometimes I don't know at all. Um, it could be in the middle of the show, which has happened before, or it could not be for three weeks.
I get asked that question a lot, you know, how often do you get to perform? And there really is no like standard typical answer. It's it's different anytime. Last week I was on as Glinda. It was a blast. <laughs> it's always fun riding in the bubble. It's the best mode of transportation. <laughs> I was sitting in this dressing room, it was a few weeks ago. We had just gotten the call for intermission. My, my cell phone rang and an announcement happened at the same time. You know, Tiffany, please come to the Glinda dressing room immediately. And, um, and I ended up being on in the middle of the show. I, I think she, she became ill. And that happens, that, you know, it's real life. I ran downstairs and the wig department had my wig ready and uh, we were ready for action very quickly. I'd say I think that happened easily in six to seven minutes. Thanks. It's a little difficult keeping up with uh, Glinda's uh, material because I do it so rarely. We have rehearsal here, but that is one big part of my job is to maintain uh, that by myself. So I sort of have to take the initiative to make sure I know the you know lines and the lyrics and the music and the blocking and the choreography, uh, so that when I do need to go on, I'm not you know a mess. Yes, I have this notebook that has uh, my understudy notes because Wicked uh, changes a little bit all the time. Uh, they love to keep it fresh and they open new companies and they uh, are just always changing little tiny things in Wicked. And even though it's been open for 10 years now, it's a totally different show from one day to the next or one month to the next. So uh, we'll have understudy rehearsal and I take notes. And so if I find out I'm going to be Glinda, uh, the first thing I do is open this and see what changed and what kind of notes I got from last uh, last week's rehearsal. The notes I get are from any number of people, but mostly the dance captains, the stage manager, or the associate director, any of those people that are the boss of me. To tell you the truth, a lot of it is we told you this before and you're still not doing it. <laughs> or um, you forgot or you're not um, following directions. But uh, a lot of reminders about the character and um, why she does the things she does and uh, choices that I make as Glinda. Uh, it's cool though because I can uh, sort of play around with it. I've been doing it for so long that it's been a fun journey and it's probably 100% different when I go on for Glinda now than it was when I started. It's usually pretty spread out in between when I go on. I would say uh, like four or five times a year. I really like to play Glinda. It's fun, but it's also um, a little stressful uh, because it's a big responsibility. Everybody knows that character is supposed to be funny, so they're waiting to see how funny you are, which is kind of <laughs> daunting. Every swing sort of has their own system. Um, I have my my little Bible here, which has all my track sheets in it, and so they're they're marked out per person. They're named at the top. Often they're named by someone who isn't actually still here because there's been I'll, I'll cover people. There's a lot of turnover over the years, and so I might have somebody that 
the name is on the track, but they actually were in the show five years ago. I just haven't updated it. Um, but we also have uh, changes that happen now and again um, where they'll shift things, and so then I have things crossed out, rewritten in, um, in my chicken scratch. So, I mean, there's a little bit of constant vigilance, but it, I've been with the show long enough now that things are pretty securely in my brain. curtain comes up, I'll be in my place. Places. Sometimes not being on stage all the time, uh, of course, can can be frustrating because that's the reason that I'm in this business and and chose this career. I love to be on stage. Um, so of course you can get a little bit anxious. Um, but I, I'm thrilled to be here and so I, I completely indulge in you know, sit into those moments when I actually do have the opportunity to be on stage. I first toured as Glinda and then came here. As you can hear the show playing right now, I come to the theater, I have my own dressing room where I kind of sit, have my own space. I can listen to the show, what's going on, and um, I also will watch the show either from the house or from the stage manager's office. There's a big TV screen there. And um, it's like regular upkeep. I have weekly voice lessons, and sometimes we rehearse um, during the show up in our rehearsal room so that we're always ready, myself, the other standby, um, understudies, uh, swings, so that we're all ready to go on stage at the drop of a hat. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> the main thing that we'll do together is tune in with the show in the office, watch the monitor, because I could be going on in three minutes. It's so easy to play opposite Kyle Dean Massey. <laughs> he is gorgeous. In a stage management office or in a green room, we have monitors that I can see certain things if I have a question about spacing or, or uh, traffic patterns of who goes where in a number of something shifted, that kind of thing. Hey Leash, you know how that light spans zero to eight? I didn't realize that until I just saw that. Like I can, I can use that whole thing. We have three things. We hit eight, center, and eight. And I just wanted to make sure that that was what was happening and that my, my brain was accurate, which it was, thankfully. We've had a couple of instances where something has happened mid-show and you just kind of, you click into a, a, a way of your brain working that it's like, okay, what needs to happen? I need to cover this, you need to cover that. Let's go, and you sort of uh, get it, get instinctual. He's not even gonna be here. Kind of like the, the sweet spot is like zero to six. Isn't it okay. wonderful? Bob was too shy to ask me at first, but once the Linda encouraged him, don't. Whenever you have moving, all that stuff yeah. can be sharper. And sometimes with Christine, it goes good. The heads go slightly different. Oh, really? So, yeah, to make sure. I think it's for her. Okay. To make sure it's really on the downbeat. Okay. Great. Thanks. Okay. No, that's great. 
You mean I'm not perfect? <laughs> <laughs> no, it is perfect. Ah! Ah! Yay! You need to have a thick skin, I think, in knowing that sometimes you're going to be not totally right and someone's going to tell you that something needs to be different and that's okay, that's just how things are. As stressed as you get, you have to maintain, or it helps to maintain a calm um, exterior because that, your emotions can get in the way if you're, if you're too freaked out. So those are all important things to look for as far as a skill set and a temperament. Mm -hmm.